hello YouTube and welcome to my uh, tutorial so this tutorial is just gonna be simply what we have here this is a uh, click team fusion and uh, this is what I use to make games I've not really published any of my games I did publish one but sadly it was considered a virus which will happen with games like this because they're not um, documented so they'll be issued as a virus when first downloaded but we'll get to that later for now let me show you what click team has to offer you don't necessarily have to use click team this can be this video can be used as a cross reference get an idea of what you want to do with your game so you press this white page to create a game or application in this term okay you have the application it'll give you some properties about it and down here most likely when you get click team you have a library to look around backgrounds and such but we won't look into that right now for now let's look at this so you have your title frame one so we can call it starting up we'll slowly build up from this we'll most likely keep using this to create um kind of a tutorial game i guess so yeah we'll call it the this first starting up and then you can choose the size it would standardly give you 640 by 480 and it'll give you this this size and you can change it as much as you like but it'll give you i believe a black area let's go back and then you have a password so if anybody wants if you're working this with anybody, they cannot mess with that frame. So one, two, three, four. So, and you can keep making as many as you want. So for right now though, let's work on here. Let's call this YTs. okay and now let's up let's start with starting up so with starting up let's get some basic things for example what do you want your game to start up with we're gonna start with active object so there's a lot of things you can do with object ab active object but for now let's do it with the basic and we can draw so suppose that you have like draw freely this is to undo, this is to redo. Then you have lines, so automatically make it a linear line. And also, if you, when you pick a color, you can left click and then right click to have two colors. This will be your first color and this will be your second color. Your first color will automatically pop up when you left click which is usually what we use when you right click you get your second color if you want to switch them you just press these two arrows and there you go they're switched left click right click okay and if you want to not pick from this palette simply just press the square you're going to double click it you have this sort of palette to try to get an idea of shades and then you can pick your custom one, picking whatever color you want by hue, saturation, lumens, and such. Or you can select by picking on here, looking around, or even back here in the background. For example, I could even pick some from down in my desktop. See that? That's cool. This white page cleans out the entire thing. We can get ourselves a box. We can fill in the box. Or we can do fill in and box by doing opposite. So if you want to change that, just do that. So we also have spray paint, which only works on when you paint. So let's get a black canvas. This fills the canvas in. Let's pick red just because it's the color of blood. Okay. 
Okay, see that's my problem. It's size one, but if you increase the size to, let's do 10. And then you can also put less pressure to make more of a shade. If we do higher pressure, then it's gonna come out straight black, straight color. And then we can also rotate. So watch this. Uh, while I'm doing this, let's pick circle. Again, same thing. Okay. So watch this. Let's pick this one. No, actually, it'd be better for a square. My bad. Swoop. And then we're going to simply. We're going to simply go here. And now we can rotate it. Watch this. Watch this. We're going to rotate it. The play. And keep applying. Keep rotating. But the only issue, as you can see, as you rotate, it does mesh and jumble. So to fix this, there's no fix. You just have to keep a chance. So we do 14. That's not really a want. Let's do 30. And you see how it still keeps it on like doing it multiple times and then having a crazy mesh. So these would just automatically turn them. Let's do 45. Kind of does that. And there's no way to really fix this, but you of course can work with this by going like this. Let's do this here. See, two is too much. I messed up there. Do -do -do. See, that looks pretty good. Okay. Now that we're done. No, we're not done. So we can add text too. Whoops. Let's do black and blue. Oh. And you can, of course, you can make it bold. Underlined. And slanted. Okay, let me do this real quick. And of course, you don't need to stay like this. You can go to font and change the way it looks. There's thousands of fonts. Bold, public, regular, and I'll give you a kind of a look of how it will look. Also, do realize this is a 32 by 32 pixel frame. So it is gonna look a little wonky like this unless you make it bigger, which you can do with this. You can just increase the size and then work around here. But what if you just wanna stretch this and make it bigger? You can proportionalize it, increase the size, and that kind of keeps your square. So I'm sorry, I lied. Stretch that does that. So do that. There you go. You can't tell from here, but it looks bigger. Okay, and then down here we have frames, which simply is... Actually, I can do this. I was going to do a rotating frame hand by hand, but you can actually right click it. Rotation. Clockwise. Let's do 12. And this is where we need to put this in hand. This is going to be your view hotspot. This one's going to be your action hotspot. This is what we will view. This is what, hap uh, what happens where something gets hit. Let's say you have another active object coming at it. It's going to hit that point. So watch this. We play it and it spins quickly. 
we can loop it and then we'll see it spin crazily. Like a flipping dog. Okay. So there's that and it goes to animations and depending on where your object would be moving, these arrows will do it and you can add much more. And of course you have your standard stop, walking, running, appearing, disappearing, bouncing, and so on and so on. And of course you can make some of your own though, where you can add new corn. Then you have a new one and you can simply go to the commands and fix that which we'll get to later. So that's the basics of using simple things and working around it. In the next video, I'll show you, of course, how to code. Okay, then. Bye.